Well aware this is an incredibly stupid question, yet I'm still going to pose it. When you think self-driving cars, even though you cannot buy one this year, next year, the year after, or probably the year after that, anywhere on God's green earth, what is the first car manufacturer that pops into your brain? Okay, so let's make attempt number one. And in essence, this is a fancy, adaptive, advanced cruise control. That's really what this thing is. So to first switch it on, we hit this button over here. And then we have to hit set here. And now the adaptive cruise is set to 42 miles an hour. And let's see if it stays in the lane. Now it's not staying in the lane very well. The best way to describe this is like teaching a 13 year old how to drive. They're like, oh, I don't know what I should do over here and see it went over into that lane over here. Now it's pushing me over into this lane over here and I don't wanna go into the trees. However, there's a catch. We are on Crenshaw Boulevard going north and this is, think of this as actually, I wouldn't say it's a four lane, it's a six lane divided highway. Uh, it's in a suburban area, but this is not one of the roads that the system can work on, and there's a reason why. And that would be mapped roads. You see, the system only works on interstates, freeways, expressways, toll roads, or the equivalent. Put another way, it won't work in your neighborhood, and that's why it didn't work on Crenshaw Boulevard. Now, General Motors and Cadillac have been more focused on the reliability of the data in the map database than growing the map database faster. So they initially hit about two years ago, 130,000 miles of road in the database. And then since then, they've grown at 70,000 miles of road. So now we have an overall total database of 200,000 miles of road. So once again, let's switch on the very fancy adaptive cruise control. And then I'm gonna set it. Okay, I've set it now to 66. Now I'm still not in Super Cruise yet. There's still one more step, and that's this button here. And now I look at the top of the steering wheel, and this tells me we are now officially in Super Cruise. And this is where we get to an important part of the system, the display on the steering wheel, not the instrument binnacle. So right now you can see it's got a solid green line on the top of the steering wheel. That's telling me the car is steering. Now when it flashes green like it's done twice now, it's saying, hey, we don't think you're paying attention. That could be my sunglasses. So I'm gonna take my sunglasses off and see it's a bit better. Yeah, it's already a bit better. We have this problem in the BMWs. When you have your sunglasses on, the system doesn't work as reliably. So now we're here we are in the left lane on the 405 going north, keeping with traffic, and the system is staying within the lane. And notice how big of a difference this is from when we were on Crenshaw Boulevard, where it's staying very much in the center of the lane. Matter of fact, it just did the flashing green because my eyes were looking at this car going past us here. So an obvious question, what's some of the equipment that goes into making all of this work? There's the basic stuff like the cameras and radar systems in the car. Then there's the LiDAR mapping. Then there's a very important camera that's inside the car that's turned around and focused on you to see if you're paying attention. It's doing that by looking at your eyes to see if your eyes are looking forward and paying attention to the road. Now all of that works in conjunction with a number of other things that does things like centering the car in the lane. Okay, so let's focus back on the steering wheel display. There's a couple of other modes. Uh, mode number two is a blue mode. You get a flashing blue light on the top of the steering wheel, and that's telling you the car is not steering, and it might be a good idea for you to start taking control of the vehicle. Then there's a red mode. The red mode is another. It's a flashing light, same thing here, but it goes into red, and that's telling you the car is not steering absolutely at all, and you need to immediately take control of the steering wheel. So basically, it's giving you different time frames in which to react based on the green, blue, or red status. Now, right now, we're passing by the end of 2-5 right and left, and you can see this is really straight here. The system has a couple limitations, and we've seen this in many other systems. Uh, very, very sharp curves. 
Uh, the system may not be able to react as fast. I've actually played around with it on a very sharp curve, and you definitely went over a bit. Oh, hold on a minute. I got the red. It says I'm not paying attention. Super Cruise disengaging. Now we're back in. Let's hit this again. Okay, we're back in Super Cruise. I don't know what happened there. That's very strange. Anyway, so as I was saying, very, very sharp curves. The system can't react as fast, so it's suggesting when you're going around sharp curves for you to have your hands on the wheel. Now there's an aspect we have yet to discuss that's rather important in making this whole equation work, and think of it as like the plumbing to Super Cruise, and that's OnStar. Most of you are very familiar with it because it's been ubiquitous in General Motors cars for years. It started out as like a hybrid between a roadside assistance program and like a low-tech navigation system. Uh, and then it's morphed into this rather important map database. And that's how General Motors updates the data in the car and makes this whole system very reliable with updated map data. But here's the catch. You need a live OnStar account working with the car to make Super Cruise work. So General Motors, they provided for three years with the purchase of the car but you have to keep the subscription going to make Super Cruise work beyond the three years. Now you may remember in previous episodes, we've done this trick with other cars, and some other cars have different technologies, like you can change lanes just by hitting the turn signal stock. Okay, once again, it's telling me to pay attention. You can change lanes just by hitting and holding the turn signal stock, and the car will change lanes. This does not do the turn signal stop trick. So let's pass this BMW. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna increase the speed of the car so we can pass the BMW. And we're clear of the BMW. I'm gonna hit the turn signal. Notice the car doesn't go into the other lane. I have to steer it into the other lane. Once it's in the other lane, it needs to now get back into center. And once again, we're back into Super Cruise. Now, of course, I'm slowing down a bit because now we get into the adaptive cruise control with the minivan in front of me. The system, you can adjust the sensitivity of the system so you don't have to worry about how close you get. Right now, I have it set to the most sensitive because I'm testing the system with you guys in the car here. I don't want to call attention to myself here, as you can imagine. Now, a very important distinction about this system that has nothing to do with technology and everything to do with the carrying case. What we're driving is a CT6 Platinum, but the Super Cruise system is not on offer in the CT6V, the one with more horsepower and torque. What you are looking at right now is level two autonomy, meaning the driver's gotta be in the car, the driver has to be able to control the vehicle, and the driver has to pay attention. So the technology's been built based on this sensor here, looking at my face and my eyes. Now that we understand each other, I found a way to kind of fool the system. And this is where we're getting into West LA, more dense traffic, you can see the traffic building up here. So the car is gonna be able to maintain the distance, but I still need to pay attention. Now, I have a pet peeve. I see a lot of folks that drive Teslas and they love the fact that the cars, they think, can drive themselves. They can't. So what they do is they say, oh, it's gonna be fine for me to pull my phone out and I am gonna get on my phone and watch a movie. Watch a movie? Seriously? Please, for all of us, don't watch a f***ing movie. So what they do is they take their phone out and they put it between themselves and the steering wheel, which provided a great opportunity for the engineers to design in a fail-safe measure, kind of like a fuse box of sorts. And what that is, is most people will take their phone out and they'll look at their phone like this. And look what happens. I'm blocking the sensor that's trying to look at my eyes. And the system is now saying, hey man, we can't see you're paying attention. It's starting to go green, flashing green. Now it goes into red, meaning we're disengaging, take control of the vehicle. So what invariably happens is I take control of the vehicle and depending on how long you weren't paying attention, the Super Cruise system will be completely locked out and the only way to re-engage it is to pull over, turn the car off, basically cycle the car, restart it, and then go back on the freeway and restart Super Cruise. A hiccup you didn't get to see as we got deeper into that more congested stop and go traffic. The system would switch itself on and off more often than it did when it was at speed. 
Now that we got that out of the way, absolutely a milestone, but not for the reasons that you think. This, not a self-driving car. You cannot buy one this year, you cannot buy one next year, and you most likely will not be able to buy one the year after that. And the reason why is the same reason why this worked so well today. You see, it's not just about the cameras, the LiDAR, the software, the mapping technology, the research that went into it. It's about the entire infrastructure that includes the car, and most importantly, all of the work that went into mapping those roads. And that's why the mapping of the roads has literally been so slow to increase the reliability of it as you saw working today. So really, in the future, if you're totally into autonomous cars, what you're looking for is not a self-driving car. Me, I'm never gonna be looking for a self-driving car. I'm always gonna have a target portion with a manual transmission. However, if you're into the self-driving cars, what you're looking for is a self-driving ecosystem.